it's one o'clock on Tuesday, March the 8th, so you must be watching Science at Soast. I'm your host, Pete McGinnis-Mark, and every week we bring graduate students or postdocs to the studio, which is streaming live from beautiful downtown Honolulu, to describe some of their exciting research. Soast, by the way, is the School of Ocean, Earth Science and Technology, and today our guest is Noah Pahoa, who is a graduate student within the Earth Sciences Department. So Noah, welcome. It's a pleasure to have you on the show. I know you're a bit nervous, but this is all meant to be fun. So welcome again. And maybe for the viewers, you can just uh, tell us a little bit about your background. Um, thank you. Thank you for the invite. Um, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Noah Paola Kanegisa. I am an international graduate student um, studying sea level rise here at SOEST. Uh, with Chip Fletcher. Um, I come from the island of Rapa Nui, so another Polynesian island, and uh, I am happy to, to be here at, at UH studying something that uh, affects us all, Polynesian island. And first of all, now I understand you've just uh, completed your master's degree, so congratulations on that. But you. um, you're from Rapa Nui. Um, what brings you from that beautiful island to Honolulu, which is not bad, but must be quite different, isn't it? Yeah, um, it is different. Um, however, I did, uh, I got my bachelor's degree in Oregon, surprisingly, uh, University of Oregon. Uh, and I knew that I wanted to continue my studies. Uh, so I was looking for opportunities on, on where to do that. And uh, when the opportunity of coming to Hawaii uh, arose. I I knew that it was the the right uh, uh, choice to make because I wanted to, as I said, continue studying, but I wanted to do it somewhere that it was uh, more relatable. Um, I like Oregon, you know. Um, Hawaii is a little bit more similar to Rapa Nui in the sense that it's an island, you know, and the the aloha spirit and the even the language, you know, the Hawaiian language. And the Polynesian heritage here must be fairly similar to what you had at home but, um, be, be, because you come from an island and you're studying on another island um, our topic today is uh, sea level rise on Oahu but I presume that's partly related to climate change and phenomena which will affect not only Hawaii but also Rapa Nui and elsewhere around the planet totally totally um Climate change, sea level rise is, is an issue that will affect um, the whole world in different um, uh, amounts, but it's going to affect us all. And um, yeah, especially Pacific Islands, low lying Pacific Islands. Um, Marquesas, for example. Or, uh, Marquesas, Kiribati. Um, well, I suspect that, uh, that the viewers have got some idea uh, on the causes or the rate of advance uh, of climate change. But if we go to the first slide, I think you put together a couple of graphs just to uh, uh, get us a little concerned. Um, can you explain to us what we're seeing? No, I think is the National Oceanographic and Atmospheric Administration. And right. here you're showing two time horizons, right? Yeah, correct. So in, in this slide, we're looking at two um, different projections of uh, what the global mean uh, sea level uh, is going to be up to the year 2100 in the case of the of the top graph and up to the year 2150 for the bottom graph. The top graph is from, as you said, from the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration um, from a paper written by Sweet et al. in 2017. And the bottom graph um, came out in a report by the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change uh, very recently. Um, and these are the values that we would expect to see um, in, the, in the coming years uh, associated uh, to, the, to the global rise of sea level. Um, mm. Perhaps the viewers can't see in detail the numbers, um, just order of magnitude, like by 2050 or the turn of the century. These models predict how much sea level rise. 
these models predict anywhere from like one meter, which is about three feet uh, to uh, two meters, which is about six feet, depending again on the projections that, that you look into. Uh, the most recent one, the one on the bottom, we can see uh, if we follow the red line, it goes up to like one point, maybe two, five meters. And then there's like a, a range of, of uncertainty uh, related to all of these projections. Um, so anywhere from like three to six um, feet uh, by the end of the century is what, what we would expect to see. Um, again, all of these all of these uh, projections have some sort of uh, it, some have some uncertainty related to them, just because there's so many processes that um, are hard to predict. Um, we don't know, for example, um, how much carbon are we going to put out into the atmosphere in the coming years, or um, any other uh, if, if factors that contribute to to the rise in, in temperature and the rise in sea level. It's hard to predict. So there's always, you know, a number that we, we always want to know a, a, a specific number. We always want to know what is going to be, you know, sea level rise by 2050 or by 2100. But uh, in fact, it is uh, very difficult to mm -hmm. give a single number. And that is why all of these projections have um, many different paths um, as to that, that, that describes where are the values that, that are more, more, most likely to be um, by the different years? And um, you know, I'm sure we could have a whole show devoted to why sea level is rising at all in terms of heating up the ocean and various uh, melting ice sheets. But uh, I think the second slide you prepared would show the viewers a little more graphically what kinds of impact. And I think these four diagrams uh, give us quite a good impression for Eastern Pacific and North America. Um, what are the, the, the four images we're looking at? But... So the four images that we're looking at are four different scenarios. These uh, are from uh, the same paper that the first uh, graph on the top, uh, the first graph that we saw. Uh, and this is uh, what I wanted to do with this slide was to show you uh, that even though um, the projections of global mean sea level rise uh, range from say three to six feet or so by the end of the century, um, the rate at which sea level is going to rise is going to be different depending on what part of the world you are. And this is because of all the different uh, factors contributing to sea level rise. So for example, we have um, adding of water into the ocean because of um, uh, glaciers melting um, thermal expansion because the ocean is heating up, but then there's also uh, the land itself that is either rising or lowering because of other um, unrelated factors. So the rate at which sea level is going to is going to show in the different places is going to be different. Uh, in this case, if we look at uh, Hawaii, we can see, um, for example, on, in the two meter global mean sea level rise scenario that the colors are uh, red. So it will be, it, 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 which means that by the end of the century, we will have around um, one meter or so of, of sea level rise. Whereas if we look at Alaska, for example, there's some blue colors there, um, which shows us that the, the sea level is actually going to drop, but this is relative to the land. So all these values that we're looking at here are relative to the land. Yeah, a very complicated situation. So there's no one statement that you can make in terms of globally, sea level will rise this amount, uh, all places equally sort of thing. But what kinds of effects can one expect here in Hawaii? Particularly your master's thesis, I think, looked at Waikiki um, what kinds of effects would you expect there? Maybe we can look at the third slide, which I think will graphically show. Right. So this is I'm familiar with. I recognize quite a few of these, but um, th this is quite serious stuff, right? 
Right, right. So um, uh, I'm glad you you point that out that these are familiar uh, places. This is what I wanted to uh, to accomplish when when showing these pictures. You know, is is having people relate um, to this to this issue that's going to affect all of us. Um, so uh, here in Hawaii, we are already seeing um, we can already see um, cases when the the ocean rises more than we were expecting. For example. Uh, King tides, we tend to call them. Um, uh, and what I wanted to show is that even today, we can already see the effects of what a rise in sea level uh, could bring to, to, to Hawaii. So uh, flooding of the streets, um, waves uh, breaking over the, over the, the sea walls. In this case, we have a parking lot that, uh, you know, probably by a marina. Uh, that is being flooded, and um, a good way to try to uh, analyze these pictures and look into the future and and think about what is it that that, that we're um, going to face um, is uh, to think about all of these king tides um, in the future are going to be a low tide. So if now this is the low tide, what you know we we can start thinking about. Well, how is the high tide? Is how is the high tide going to look if this tell is already more, the low tide? But tell me more about what you mean by a king tide. Obviously, the images you showed were real photographs going back to 2016. But what is a king right. tide? Right. So we normally have um, the, the the normal tides, which are predictable. You know, we say, "Oh, tomorrow the tide is going to be high and it's going to rise." whatever, one feet, two feet, right? Uh, but then there is other factors that are uh, background levels of water that affect also the tides, uh, which are a little bit harder to predict. For example, um, eddies um, or, or different currents or storm surge if there's a storm happening uh, at the same time. So um, usually, uh, I mean, king tides um, means that the, the tide is, is higher than uh, we, we had previously expected it to be. Um, okay. So yeah. I, I see you know, um, our, our Sea Grant program at UH uh, got those photographs. They look as if they're from like Waikiki and Mapunapuna. And um, I was out at uh, Alamoana Beach, for example, on one of those occasions. and. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's disconcerting that uh, there's a lot of saltwater encroachment onto the infrastructure. I right. actually had a, a question uh, come in over the chat, uh, and I'll read it. So are there construction techniques that can be implemented to address this kind of threat, either for homes or for businesses? You know, um, what do people do apart from moving land? Right. Um, this is a very difficult question, uh, and it and it depends, you know, on what is it that the sea level is going to cause in the specific place um, that you're trying to put your infrastructure or modify your infrastructure. So, say for example, if you are um, really close to the coast, um, people would tend to put up uh, sea walls to prevent coastal erosion and to prevent the houses from falling into the ocean. Right. Uh, but then there's also this other component of places that can be flooded because of um, the water table rising with the level of the ocean and getting inundated, even though they're not connected to the ocean. So it really depends on on what is it that you're trying to, what is the issue that you're trying to address? Um, and where, and it, where you mentioned rising water table, I know your, your thesis, for example, you look at Waikiki and the diagram number, slide number four, uh, starts to look very disconcerting. If we could have uh, the fourth slide. Um, this is one of three, I think you've prepared um, mm -hmm. for flooding at just over a meter. Um, so that's probably about four feet. About um, four feet, right. Yeah, a and perhaps you, you can point out yeah, I can see the Alawai Canal and right. Uh, yeah, so so this is the heart of our tourist area. What what is it that these are showing this diagram? 
Right, so in this diagram, um, we're showing flooding, uh, the 80%, the, the at least 80% probability of flooding of the Waikiki Peninsula. Uh, to make these maps, um, we take into account uh, uncertainties that are related to the data that we use to make this um, diagram. And that's where the 80% probability comes from. Uh, in this map, we can see the Hilton Lagoon is that is the blue uh, blob to the to the left of the diagram. Uh, and then you can see the Alawai Canal. Uh, the areas uh, that are depicted in shades of blue are areas that we would expect uh, to be flooded um, through marine inundation, which means that the area is uh, has a direct connection to the ocean. Whereas the other areas that are that are depicted in shades of of green are areas that in the modeling lie below the water level that we were modeling, but don't have a direct connection to the ocean. Okay. And based and how, on pre how, me, how, how did you produce that map? I mean, do, do you go out with a surveying equipment or do you have other kinds of data sets that you use? So this is all done um, by computer. Um, what we do is we use uh, what is called a digital elevation model or a DEM, mm -hmm. um, which tells us what is the what does the terrain look like, um, what's the height of each specific um, pixel in this case on our DEM, and then and the other uh, part of the of the simulation is um, a tidal surface. So where is the the ocean relative? to our digital elevation model. And what we do is we raise this tidal surface uh, little by little, assuming that um, different scenarios of sea level rise, say for example, okay, we have two, three um, feet of sea level rise. We raise our tidal surface um, and see what are the areas in our digital elevation model that lie uh, underneath the tidal surface. All of the areas that are underneath the tidal surface then are assumed to be flooded. And then after we assume that they're, that, that they're flooded, we can distinguish which areas are going to, uh, we, would we expect to be flooded directly from the ocean or which areas are going to be flooded um, by groundwater inundation. So even though this is a simulation, your input data are real and uh, basically elevation measurements uh, right. and, as well as land use. And uh, that illustration was hard to believe. That was the good scenario, right? That was just a meter and point, right. 1.2 meters. The next slide shows something a little bit more disconcerting. We go to slide five. So. This is also by the end of this century, right? So it's Correct. the same kind of model, but a higher level of sea level rise. Exactly. So as as I showed in the in the in the very first slide, you know, there's different paths that we can follow, um, and those and in in terms of of um, emissions of greenhouse gas emissions, and all of these uh, paths have an outcome on uh, how much sea level rise are we going to see. And for each one of those paths, I made a different map. Um, in this case, uh, this map shows the somewhat, the not the worst case scenario, but a very bad scenario already. Um, in this case, we're looking at 1.9 meters of sea level rise, which would be about six feet by the end of the century. And we can see most of the Waikiki Peninsula is uh, all in shades of blue, which means that the ocean is, is going to flood the whole uh, or most of the, of the peninsula by the end of the century. If we were to follow, you know, this one of the, one of the worst uh, um, carbon and, emissions. And of course, it wouldn't stop, sea level wouldn't stop rising in 2100. And this is just a snapshot in time. Right. But um, another question uh, over the chat, for example, if you're flooding Waikiki to even a meter, um, what do you think that means for the economy or the financial health of Hawaii? This is bad news, I would have thought. Right, 
Right. So this will be bad news and, and bad news. And they, I mean, bad news in, in, from different perspectives, you know, in, and in all the perspectives, it, it seems like it's bad news, you know, it would increase uh, coastal erosion. It would um, obviously flood some areas. Um, uh, buildings, for example, that have a, a stories, um, what are they called, underground, mm -hmm. um, will we'll start flooding. Um, the sewage system uh, might be affected. Anything that is really underground and that can be reached by the, the water table rising uh, is going to be a concern. Is, is there anything good or positive that can come out of dealing with sea level rise? Shall, shall we make Waikiki a Venice of the Pacific, for example? Or, or, I know I you're not an economist, you're not an, an architect, but there's a, a good coastal geomorphologist. What do you think? Um, I think that the positive thing that, that we can get out of sea level rise and all the issues that we that we are dealing with is uh, the opportunity for everyone, for, for people from different um, areas of studies to come together and, and start thinking for, for us, for the community, you know, you and me, that we don't want um, all of these, all of these uh, bad situations to happen. And I think it's the opportunity for us to get together and, and figure it out together and for you, for me, and for everyone. Mm -hmm. So your slide six, I think, summarizes um, some of the impacts. Uh, if we can go to the next one. Uh, and here it's a little bit different, right? This is just the, the, the probability. Right. And what, what does that probability mean? Right. So with the methodology that we use to make the maps, we can make two different kinds of maps. We can hold either and the the amount of sea level that is going to flood still and then vary the probability or we can hold the probability and then vary the flood depth. The first two maps that uh, we showed uh, had 80, at least 80% probability of flooding. In this case, I am showing, okay, any flooding at all, what's the probability of any flooding at all happening uh, with 1.1, uh, sorry, 1.19 meters of sea level rise. So in this case, our probability is telling us how sure are we that the daily highest water level would have the extent that we, that we think. So in this case, if we look at, for example, the, all the blue areas, um, we, we know we have at least 80% uh, probability of flooding, which means that the areas that are outside of the blue areas have at least 20% probability of staying dry. So for example, uh, um, this map will be useful if you wanted to plan um, uh, to build an infrastructure that, that could potentially be of concern if it were to flood, right? Uh, in this case, a 20% or at least 20% probability of flooding would give us that the area surrounding that area has an at least 80% probability of staying dry. Uh, and that is what is valuable of, of these probability maps. Well, I, I see areas just north of the LOI Canal, you know, like where the golf course is. I right. used to live on corner of Eisenberg and Kapiolani, and there's a high probability there. Right. So hey, this is just Waikiki. I think you're, you're Final slide, slide seven, actually so sort of tries to deal more with Oahu. And we've got two different screenshots and web pages by the look of it. Right. So the, mod, the, the, the previous slide is, is a model that I just developed. Uh, I just finished my master's in December and, and that was the outcome of that modeling. And the idea is to uh, take it to the next level and, and do it for, for the whole island of Oahu and for the other islands as well. Uh, in this case, in this slide, I wanted to show uh, what are the resources available today um, that you can access to freely if you wanted to see um, what is going to be the extent of flooding caused by sea level rise under different scenarios. So, uh, in the left-hand side, I show, I'm show i showing the PAC iOS. 
sea level rise viewer, um, which for some islands show only uh, passive flooding, uh, and for some other islands show passive, flo passive flooding uh, in addition to um, flooding by wave action. Um, and then on the right hand side, I have a snapshot of a screenshot of the NOAA sea level rise viewer. And this is another resource that you can um, look into if you are uh, trying to see what is going to be the extent of flooding. The PAC IOS sea level rise viewer is a, a specific for the Hawaiian Islands, whereas the NOAA sea level rise viewer provides the information for, for the whole um, U, uh, United States. And, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but those maps are predominantly uh, through sort of the ocean rising and lapping over the beach. They don't include what you had done for Waikiki, which would be the water leaking through the, um, the, the ground soil and then forming salt marshes and things like that. Correct, correct. So the NOAA sea level rise viewer does add um, that in some specific places, um, not as much as, as the one that, that I did. So, so, uh, so we're getting near the end of the show, Noah, but um, what are your plans for living either in Hawaii or Rapa Nui with uh, rising sea level? Are, are you heading for the hills or what, what, what would be your plan? Um, heading for the hills is a pretty safe bet. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, you know, I'm, I'm just here trying to be one of the, of the, of the people that are going to try to, to help mitigate um, the bad situations that we, that we can get out of. And, and I'm really appreciative that um, you know, you've come on this show. This is the sort of thing the community here in Hawaii needs to hear many times so we can start planning for the eventualities. But uh, alas, we've come to the end of the show, Noah. So uh, I'd like to remind the viewers, you've been watching Science at Soast. I'm your host, Pete McGinnis-Mark. And my guest today has been Noah Paho, who is a graduate student within the Earth Sciences Department. So Noah, thank you again for appearing on the show. Scary stuff, I've got to admit, but uh, very interesting. So good luck with your PhD. And uh, hopefully we'll have you on the show some other time. That's all for now, folks. Uh, so please join us again next week where we'll have another summary of research at the School of Ocean, Earth Science and Technology. So until then, goodbye for now. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.